All right, guys, what is up? It is Gnomes. I'm here in a game between Alakami and Elephant Gun. We have an Elephant Gun in the top hand side. He'll be the one here, I guess, on the left hand side. He's the one playing UD. It looks like it might be fire, which will be very hard for Alakami to beat, especially on this map. And then we have Alakami um, on the right hand side playing actually split. FWUD, generally when you see the split, um, you would typically think that it is actually going to be stitches, or stitch, stitched, sorry, <laughs> not stitches, stitched, um, possibly, maybe also vampires you could think of, but this is actually just a meta battle group, so it's going to be meta, meta FWUD versus fire UD, I think it's fire UD at least. Um, we do have the Fire Elemental. This could be a meta champion, possibly. Um, this champion does have Lava Walker, actually. So uh, This champion ignores movement restrictions and movement penalties imposed, imposed by Lava. So what that means is uh, this champion... And here, sorry, sorry, fire damage that would be dealt to this champion by Lava is prevented. So he can move over this easily. So this is all just complete, you know... Uh, ground for the fire elemental, but on the other hand, it cannot use that fire eater to heal back up. Nice 10 damage. He has quite a bit of damage, so even though we do see that reflexes, he still does 10 plus another 6 with that fire aura, so 16 already da damage already done, plus the uh, damage from the font, so he's already at 28. Very low. He could think of teleporting over here and then like walk, like trying to get away. But look, if this shade caster like teleports over here to kind of move this way, maybe like away from the fire elemental, then he um, hurts himself. And look at this. Also, we have a um, fire shield. Such an insanely one, an insane one-on-one -on -one champion. When it comes to like melee, this champion is very good because attacking him is not fun because of the fire, the fire shield. But then you're also getting aura damage, so. We could see like a death pact into a, a kill though. That would be 22 damage, yeah. He'd actually have a perfect kill here with the death pact. He's at 44 minus half is 22, and he does 11 and 11 because of the one defense. All right, he's going to use the pounce. That also does give him the portal siphon, so two more HP and then an attack. Now, So now he's at 24 health versus 18. Again, he'll deal 10 and 10. This should be a kill though, right? Yeah. Because the Grimlock can attack once, and then he just double taps here, and that's a kill. He also, he does not get the Neural Globe though. That's actually really big. He doesn't get the Neural Globe. Ooh, okay. It comes out. All right, so he did play a spell. I think it's called Obelisk or something. Do we can find it. I know, a split personality. My bad. Wrong. So, split personality came out. Ooh, he can actually move here. I'm not sure if he does damage to himself, though. The Shadecaster will die now to this aura, but he didn't, um, he didn't get, the, he won't get the Neural Globe just yet. Elephant Gun, that is. Also, what we saw here is two spells, right? We saw split personality as well as erupt that was played. Oh, no, wait, split personality was from him, I guess. So, Moving in is pretty scary here, right? Like, if this Deathcaster wants to move in, he's taking the damage from both uh, of these eruptions. See, is the Fire Elemental ever dead? He has 11 minus 1 is 10. So he would need 4 more damage to get this kill. It needs a way to kind of get around these these lava. You go all the way down again like this, right? If he goes like this, he can kind of circumvent all this lava. And then go like this. But then he's still facing a Grimlake and a Doombringer here, who has double adaptive actually went off. He's at 16 damage already, as well as 58 health. Played two spells. What did he play again? He played the Funnel River Eruption. What else did he play? It's interesting that he's actually making these all go off. Wow, he's causing all of them to go off with his Deathcaster. 
He's probably gonna sacrifice here, right? Oh no, that actually gives him the multi attack now. That's kind of fun. So he gets the multi attack from the uh, blood frenzy because he took all that damage. Smart, well done. At least it was intelligent. But yeah, what did he paid erupt. What was the other split personality was from Alakami. So what was the other spell he played? I think I'm forgetting something here. Somehow. Huh. Sacrifice would be good here. Sacrifice the Deathcaster. Oh, wait, you can't because of the Eternal, right? Yeah, the Deathcaster has Eternal. It used to not have that, actually. Now, the Nor the Fonts is not um, Elephant Guns yet, but he can get both Noro Globes, right? Ten, yeah. So, is he going to get both of them or just one of them? And then retreat. Go here, retreat two again. Ooh, plays price of victory. Look at this. Now at 70 health, basically, and 17 damage. You got 9 health there. You can use an attack or a firebomb. You'd have to use another spell, though, for the kill. Unless he just attacks, and he's dead to the burn. Yeah, okay, so now... Oh, no, he doesn't die, though. If he had just done a normal attack, he would have actually been able to get the kill here. With the burn, I mean. Uh, plays the tinder box actually as well as flame armor look at this now 67 health 5 defense crazy the obsidian avenger is though at 22 damage so very high damage at the moment he could sacrifice he could double tap sacrifice possibly but he's also at 67 health on the doombringer very back and forth game so far right now we have two chambers out for each but um, and a lot of spells being played right and what's so important when you have so many spells being played is getting those Nora Globes. Really important to get the Nora Globes. We see, or we saw that Alakami got, is getting this one. Elephant Gun got, is going to probably get both of these. Ah, he's going to actually move on the Grimlick here, it seems. But even, even like, um, immobilization wouldn't be that good, would it? No, he's not in range for the Moby to do. Yeah, he has Price of Victory as well. He can double tap for 22 damage, but it's not enough. He would need another another spell to get this kill, as well as he wants to get this Norglo pretty badly, which he can't at the moment. He's one space away. So this Obsidian Avenger will survive the turn, or sorry, will die next turn, sorry, to probably the Doombringer. One tap from the Doombringer. Uh, there's the split personality. That gets a kill, but not the Nora Globe. Though it is quite safe, right? This Nora Globe right here is re relatively safe. Because these Grimlicks weren't moved. If if Elephant Gun had moved these Grimlicks, they could grab the Nora Globe now. There. I mean, he's dead, and he gets both. So attack, get this Nora Globe, and this Nora Globe is safe. And it's one versus one again. Wow, this whole game has gone on and it's 1v1 at the moment crazy i mean i think you could also go here right but the bad thing about going here is that uh the cora could leap to this location and get both of them so you kind of want to protect these nor globes rather than just take this one all right deploys the fire phoenix very back and forth game very fun to watch games like this are kind of cool where it's just like kill for kill all right gets one nor globe he could leap here and get this one, but that's maybe not worth it. It's always kind of hard to see, right? You have to play um, around knowing when is it worth it to pay AP for Nor Globes and when is it worth it to pay... Ah, he's going to go for it now that he has the War Banner. See, it's hard to know. Do you pay the Nora for a Nora Globe or do you pay the Nora for attacks, right? Here he decides, I'm going to use Seismic Leap, with a, which is a three-turn cooldown. As well as, you know, moving right up against a 17 damage Doombringer just to get a Nora Globe, right? So you can see how highly these people, um, or these players, I guess, value Nora Globes. Especially in these, like, very close battles, kind of like this. But the only reason he was able to take that Nora Globe is because he was able to put a, um, a War Banner down, which contests, so... I mean, right now he's at 44 HP. He'll stay in the font very long because of the double trouble, but it is three champions right now versus two, right? He's down a bit. What the heck was that? Hmm. 
Hmm. I'm a little confused as to how that thing died. The uh, gremlin that was up here. No idea. The gremlin just randomly died. Your gremlin dies from what? Hmm. No idea. Kind of weird. Korug's still chilling here. I mean, he'll still, like I said, for a very long time, he'll be here because of the Dole of Trouble. Now, Ruby Crawler. Yeah, it is a bit of a fire deck, right? Fire decks, very fun, um, like thematically. But I, I'm a little bit sad about the loss in, uh, you know, the, the healing by lava. But it was kind of needed. Cause there's so many maps with lava. It made it kind of o OP. Ah, he used deflect on him. That's what he did. He used deflect. Isn't that funny? So when you use an ability on a illusion, it dies. And because he used deflect on him, like he clicked deflect on the illusion, I think it, that's how it died. So a bit of a trick play. Now, it's both good and bad. On the one hand, it's nice for him, but on the other hand, now uh, the cooldown is gone, right? But he was able to get rid of him. Get rid of the the chant or the illusion so he doesn't have to protect the font anymore, right? But yeah, that's what that's what happened. I was so long looking, but yeah, he used deflect on him. It's a bit of a, a weird idea because this isn't a damaging ability, but how illusions are coded, you can just click anything on them. You can even even like, I don't know. Whatever you want, you can click on them and they'll die. All right, there's the uh, Angel of Death. Now, the Angel will cleanse this vulnerable fire or the sabotage once it intensifies, but for now, it still is, um, still is vulnerable. 18 damage on this Korog right now. Holy. Plus three. Plus three from the Conqueror. Plus one from War Banner. Plus two from the UD bonus. So plus six in all. I mean, kind of getting rid of this Doombringer might be a good start. Wow, he's actually moving away with the Korog. I mean, like I said, he knows he has the two little summons, so he can, uh... Well, we can double tap the War Banner, though, and it's dead, yeah. And then he just moves here and deploys. So it kills the War Banner, which does reduce 15 HP here. And then here's an attack. And the aura will kill. Oh, wait, um, is it two defense? Yeah, it's actually just a perfect kill. This illusion is in range of the Angel of Death. Right, now, here's the two double trouble that's coming out. They're both going to get damage from this aura, though. This aura will actually hit both of them, do, dealing 12 damage. And going to engage. Yeah, smart idea, so they can't move over there easily. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, otherwise, you'd be in. And he retreats one space. Very smart. Can't be in. Now he's not in range of the Angel of Death attack. Yeah, he can move here, but he doesn't really want to move here. And this look, yeah, okay, that works too. Lava Walker again. Yeah, a bit interesting to give him Lava Walker because he never had Fire Eater. So this is only a buff. Alright, I'm back. Had a, a package come to our doors. I deleted real quick. Alright, so like I said, we have the uh, two zombies trying to move in onto this font, trying to contest it. But even if you were to place like a relic, because these aren't summons, right? So they can kind of go into the font themselves. But even if these um, were to place a relic, it would die relatively quick quickly and it wouldn't be worth it, right? So. The Cory will kill the Fire Phoenix, but it will come back with that rebirth. Um, 
and the Barog will kind of also just die over here. Now, the Infamiliar actually can't kill it, though, so there's that. Okay, gonna kill the Barog over the Cory just because it does want to protect the font. <clears throat> So while Grimlake is in play, when a friendly wizard uses an inactivated ability that is not a basic attack, that ability has a cooldown, has its cooldown is reduced. That's a bit wrong, isn't it? That ability has its cooldown is reduced by one to a minimum of one. Yeah. I'm not sure if that counts off of Grimlake, though, off of the illusion, I mean. It seems like it did. Which is interesting. It looked like it went off on the illusion. Yeah, and now we again have the stall fest. This is what happens between like players that know what they're doing. Then like they know, huh? I don't lose by giving up this font because it's so hard to get through this choke point. You know, you need things to go on the into the side font. So then often you have like three fonts to one, and then like hmm, now what? And he really wants to get this intensify to go off, so he can't move in with the with the angel. We have vulnerable fire here, so that's not good, and deflect is not up. Summon Skeleton. And this champion's range, right? So when it's in, um, because of the Lava Born, when it's on Lava, it actually has range attack. Cinderpede used to be one of the most OP champions with uh, Fire Eater. Fire Eater and not Lava Walker, that is. Like nowadays, all the champions that used to have just Fire Eater that could heal off the lava are gone, basically. Ooh, is this Shatter? What's he shattering? Ah, uh, the Tinderbox, possibly? I mean, that'd be my idea. Why else would you move him there, right? Or he's going to use a uh, Maddening Echoes? Nah, just a Shatter it so, so far. But look, 67 health on the champion. With he had so many spells while this this was the second champion deployed right so spells plus uh, price of victory twelve plus five and no war banner out yet even if war banner is out then boom got the shatter off though not bad. Like I said, it can't really contest. None of these champions can really just chill in the font. Like, it, here's Mirrored, right? Mirrored is a good ability if you want to... This is all fire damage, right? Fire damage, fire damage, magical damage. So, no physical. So, Mirrored would do well here. This will also do fine. The Ethereal. It needs his champion to be Ethereal once he moves in. Then it can kind of chill there for a while. Alright, gets this Normal Globe. Flame Charge would also be good, though. Right, there's one flame charge. Is he doing it both? Wow, okay. So now fire damage increased by four. Is he going in then this turn? I don't know how he's going in though. This is just an attack. Ooh, 22 damage. What spell was that? Shoals fireball. It's usually 16. But the vulnerability as well. I was going to say the vulnerability and then an attack. Nice. Easy kill. Does heal though, it does heal this Cory. Not that it'll matter, because it's like I said, I'm, this is a eh, aura. Yeah, aura. That's what's, yeah, there you go, GG. Yeah, a bit of a hard hard map. Um, it was okay in the beginning, um, but the trades were too much. GG.